Hello my beautiful painters. Today I want to do a review on some dollar store acrylic paints and how they work with some acrylic pores. So I'm going to show you a couple of the ones that I found at Dollar Tree and also like some paintings that I've done using these paints and how these compare to um, my usual paint from Artist Loft. So um, this is the one that I usually use. Sometimes I use um, other brands, you know, like DecoArt, um, Craftsmart, etc. You know, you ha I have different brands that I've used, but this is the one that I mostly stick to um, just because it's not the worst, but it's also not as expensive as other brands. So this is kind of like a middle ground for beginners that want to use a better quality paint without spending a ton of money. So anyways, I'm gonna compare these to this. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about what we can find at Dollar Tree. So initially, uh, maybe a few months ago, they only carried something like this. Okay, from the brand, I think it's Jot. And they, these are kind of like the only paints they had. They had white, black, yellow, and purple. And I think that's it. I think those were the only colors that they carried. Um, then later, they, um, I found this one too, from Crafters Square. And, um, this is a tempera paint. So this is acrylic paint, this is tempera. So as far as acrylic pouring goes, I prefer the acrylic paints. Tempera is gonna be, I, I really would not use this for acryl acrylic pouring unless it's just maybe for a kid's craft or something like that. So if you want to really do something uh, really cheap you know, an acrylic pour that is really cheap, maybe a school project or something like that, where you're gonna have kids working with this, and then I would use tempera, but that's about it. Like, I would not use tempera for anything else. Like, this is just for like testing, trying out acrylic pouring, not really meant to keep um, your painting uh, for a long period of time. This, I found out, after using them that also my colors were not vibrant after they dried, even after pouring, putting a coat of varnish, they didn't really look great. Plus, um, you know, these colors don't go well together and um, initially they only have these two plus white and black and so that was not a good combination to do an acrylic pour. However, I don't know if they have any other colors, um, but the quality, I did not really like it, okay? Um, so now let's talk about the new paints that I found. These are the ones that Dollar Tree has barely started like introducing into their art section. So they have a ton of different colors and I don't have all of the colors here. They have a lot more a few more, uh, but yeah, these are just some examples. They have orange, magenta, vermilion, which is, a, you know, a darker orange, more of a reddish orange. They have a deep yellow. They have a regular yellow. So that's nice, you know, because you have different shades of yellows, different shades of oranges. I couldn't find red when I went to the store. This is the only red that I found. It's a red oxide, but it kind of looks more like a brownish red. So it's not like, um, yeah, I, I wanted to find a bright red. I couldn't find one. I'm not sure if they carry one and they were just out of stock, but yes, red, I could not find. I found a deep brown. Um, they also have these nice uh, darker shades of blue, a deep blue, phthalo blue, and cobalt blue. So this is nice because I have different shades of blue. And I'm trying to remember if they had another shade of blue. I can't remember at the moment. Um, 
They also, oh yeah, this is just another magenta that I got. Then they also have violet, and I think they also have a purple one, so which is darker than this. And medium green, light green, and they had another type of green, I can't remember the exact name, but yeah, it was darker than this, and I didn't really, I'm assuming it's probably dark green, because this is light, medium, and I'm assuming the next one is uh, dark green. And I just wasn't a fan of that color, so I didn't get it. So anyways, those are kind of just some examples of colors that I've been able to find in this particular brand, Acryology. And so now let's talk about how they work with your acrylic pores. So let's look at this one first. This is one that I did just with these dollar store items. I think I used the cobalt blue. I can't remember the exact colors, but I think it was light green, cobalt blue, and a darker blue. I can't remember if it was the phthalo blue or the deep blue. But anyways, it was something like this. Um, and white as well. And so anyways, that turned out I think it turned out great like the colors look good they are not faded and uh, the pouring medium that i used for this was actually this glue tacky glue from aline's so this you can also find at the dollar store and i just mixed 60 percent of this with of uh, yeah of glue with 40 percent water and then i used that pouring medium to uh, water down my paints so that they would have a pouring consistency. And then I used that on my canvas, also a dollar store canvas. And as you can see, they turned out, the colors are pretty uh, bright. The finish is what kind of amazed me because you can see that it's glossy and I did not add any varnish to this, okay? This is just the effect that the glue actually gave the paints. So, sorry guys, let me clarify something here. So initially I thought that the shiny or glossy finish was due to the using the tacky glue, the Aline's tacky glue. However, after looking at two more paintings in which I also used the tacky glue and the dollar store paints, I realized that it is actually a combination of the paints mixed with the tacky glue. So I do have um, an acry acrylic pouring video here on my YouTube channel, which I will link down below. In, in that video, I show how I did this painting with these dollar store items. And it's actually a series of three videos, three, three, yeah, three videos, um, where I kind of showed how I mixed my pouring medium with my paints, how I poured them, and um, yeah, so it's a series of three videos. So I'll link that series down below if you're interested in looking at that. But yeah, as you can see, these colors work pretty well if mixed with um, a pouring medium that is glue and water, just like the one I mentioned. Okay, so that's one example. Let me show you. This is another example of um, a painting that I did with the dollar store items. And this one is actually not as vibrant as I would like to, um, you know, the paint here did end up looking a little bit shiny. So, you know what, I'm not even sure, like the rest of the painting, this still doesn't have a varnish on. So, as you can see the black areas, this is just my regular black paint, uh, not a dollar store paint. This, this is paint from the dollar store. And as you can see, this has also a glossy finish. So I'm trying to remember what I did with this one. I can't remember if I mixed 
this paint with the glue? I don't think I did. I think it was Floritrol. So yeah, I'm just, I can't remember. So I'm sorry, I couldn't tell you if this glossy finish from these colors is due to the paint itself or if it's due to me using uh, glue. Okay, I wanted to show you these two paintings because I wanted you to compare these with the previous one that you just saw. And as you can see, this blue and green is super shiny. The other one, the red with um, the yellows and oranges and blues, that one is not shiny. However, I did end up using dollar store paints for both of them. So the only difference um, between these two paintings is the pouring medium. The, the shiny one used the glue, the Aline's glue, and the one that is not shiny, uh, I used Floatrol for that one. So um, it, just by looking at these two, you would initially think that it's, be, you know, that the shiny look is coming from the pouring medium, you know, the, the Aline's glue. However, if you look at the previous painting that I just showed you, the galaxy one, you can conclude that it's actually not the pouring medium that is affecting the shiny look, okay? It is actually a combination of the Aline's glue with the dollar store paints. Why? Because that um, galaxy painting, you know, that black area, uh, the one in which I used the Craftsmart uh, black paint, I ended up using the Aline's glue pouring medium for that paint. And that paint or that area, that black area was not shiny. So there I have my evidence that the Aline's glue is not making my paints shiny, okay? It's not the glue and it's not, um, and it's not the paints either because in this yellow and red and orange painting, for that one I used Floatrol and I used dollar store paints, but still the painting is not shiny. So yes, from all of these, uh, from these three paintings that I just showed you, that is my conclusion that it is a combination of the dollar store acryology paints mixed with Aline's glue that will give you that shiny look. Uh, but you can see what I was trying to tell you regarding this is that the colors mixed with, with each other a lot more. Um, and here the white kind of looks like it's cracking. Like let me show you now the difference. This one I made with my regular Artist Loft paints. And if we compare these two, you can see that the purple, sorry, I need to grab them. Okay. The purple is a lot more vibrant than the purples right here. And the pink also, okay? This one is a lot less, less bright, less vibrant than the pink on this side. And yes, this one does have varnish um, and this one doesn't, but if you look at it in person, um, the shininess from this paint, you know, you can see the shininess there, is very, very similar to the shininess on this paint. So I don't think it's a matter of having a varnish on top. I just think it's a matter of the paints that I used. These look more vibrant than these do. Okay. And they, these mixed or muddied less than these did. So there's one example. You can even tell with the white, that white is super vibrant. I mean, it's, it's very like it kept its color. Whereas if you look at this white, this white doesn't look as vibrant. 
Okay, so yeah, you can tell that there's white in there, but if you compare it to this white, you can see how this is a lot brighter. Maybe if we go like that. Okay, you can see that white is a lot brighter, this one, than this one. So that's an example. That's why I brought this, that other one there. And now let me show you. These were also done with dollar store paints, okay? And I really like this one. However, uh, the white is also kind of cracking right here and right here. Let me show you. Oh, okay, there. You can see the crack right there. Um, there's some little holes right there in the white paint. And over here, you can see the white cracking right there. So yeah, so even though this does look vibrant, you know, it looks a lot better than the other painting that I showed you. And maybe it's because I, I just try to keep colors uh, a little bit separated from each other. This one, I used um, Floetrol. For this one, I did use Floetrol. I, I did not use a glue and water mixture, okay? This one was just pure Floetrol. These paints are not awful, but they're also not the best. I mean, you can get decent results with this. If we compare these two, like you can get decent results with these type of paints as long as you don't water them down too much. Well, I'm not gonna say water them. If you don't <laughs> dilute them too much with your pouring medium. So try to keep a higher ratio of paint to pouring medium. Um, don't add, add water. Water will break down your paints. Um, it's better to use, if you are going to be using water to make your paint, paints thinner, try to use um, a glue and water pouring medium because that will definitely uh, keep your colors, your pigments together and will not break them down. As you can see, this one does not have any... You know, the colors are sticking very well together. Um, and this one worked out pretty well as well. So again, this one was made with a pouring medium of glue and water. This one was just uh, mixed, the paints were just mixed with Floetrol. So there you have paintings that I've done with these dollar store paints. I hope that is helpful to you and that that kind of helps you decide you know if you want to give these paints a try i think these are awesome for beginners because you can start doing some acrylic pours with very little investment compared to you know buying maybe something like this which let's see yeah this is four ounces this is four ounces so this was one dollar at dollar tree this was four like around 460 something so maybe close to five dollars for one of these let me know if you enjoyed this video if this was helpful to you i'd appreciate if you would give me a thumbs up and also subscribe if you haven't done so and check out the links in the description box because i have a ton of goodies there you know free guide and other helpful videos for you and i'll be seeing you in my next video bye